Hello and welcome to the tutorial video for the physical Forza ETH race deck F1 10th. For this tutorial you should have looked at the Forza ETH installation, the Forza ETH simulation and you should be familiar how to build and handle the hardware of an F1 10th car. Ensure you followed our installation video to set up the system on both the car and a personal laptop to serve as the pit station. If you haven't, please refer to our installation tutorial linked here. Transitioning from the simulator to the physical system allows you to test algorithms like overtaking and state machine operations seamlessly in real world conditions. For details on simulator usage, refer to our simulator tutorial. Lastly, to run the Forza ETH stack on a physical system, you will of course have to have built the F110 robot. For this, follow the instructions on the official F110 build page on f110.org. Our stack supports both x86 and ARM architectures, hence you can use either a Jetson or an Intel NUC. Follow the instructions and your robot should be compatible with our stack. Therefore, in this video, we want to showcase how to operate the Forza ETH race stack and give you instructions on how to do it. To begin, open the Forza ETH race stack repository. The main branch supports ROS1 Noetic, and you can either source install it on Ubuntu 20.4 or use the containerized version, which is OS independent. The commands used are the same. Here, we will be using the containerized version. Now, Scroll down to the getting started part and click on the readme of the stack master. Here you can find all necessary commands to run the car. Before diving into the robot operations, let's first do a short stack master overview to give you an intuition of the structure. Stack master is the main package to interact and to operate the robot. Within the config folder, all algorithmic and hardware specific parameters are located. In Stagmaster config, we have provided you with three different race car versions Jet 1, Nook 2, and Sim. This contains parameters specific to a robot, such as, for example, the steering angle offset and many more, following the official F110 guide. Then, the maps folder contains all the maps. Here we have some example maps. If you map a new track, a new map folder will be created in here and can also be used in the simulator later on. In fact, all maps can always be used in the simulator, but to be able to use the map with SLAM on the real car, it needs to have a .pb stream file, which is used by our localization algorithm cartographer. Then the launch folder contains the most important launch files to operate the race car. With this brief overview, let's continue and connect to the car. Now open VS Code on your PIT station, your laptop, and connect to the robot via SSH. If you don't see this option, first install the remote extension in VS Code, as well as the dev container extension. Now, you should be attached to the container in VS Code. Since VS Code containers are spun up in a complicated way, connecting to GUI applications requires a bit more involvement and a secondary SSH connection, to which we can relay the X or the display. For this reason, we're going to open up another terminal and connect to the car via SSH, this time enabling display forwarding by setting an X flag. Move to the Forza ETH race stack directory and run the xauth setup script. You should get at least the first line of the following output.
Memorize the display number on this SSH connected terminal after printing it to the screen. Open up the dev container on the car, first by opening up VS Code, then connecting to the car with the remote connection button at the bottom left, connect to host. Then open the race stack folder and reopen in the dev container. In the dev container terminal where you now want to use the GUI application, export the display variable number that you just memorized. Now enjoy a terminal where you actually have display forwarding and can use graphical interfaces. Okay, now that we are connected, let's first start with mapping. Before being able to autonomously drive, we need to map the racing track. For this, you can set up some ventilation duct pipes to shape your track or cardboard boxes in an arbitrary leash closed loop. Then place the robot on the track and connect the controller. Now you can go back to your laptop and go to the VS Code session that is connected to the car, open a new terminal on the car and start a ROS core there. After the ROS core is started, we can launch mapping, but first we want to export the display variable um, so that we can actually get any graphical interfaces. After that, we can do ROS launch stackmaster mapping.launch and set the arguments for the map name and the race car version. In our case, we gave the map the name tutorial map and we used race car version look 5. Now switch to a local terminal on your laptop. And now we want to connect this terminal to the other ROS core. For this, we need to export the ROS master URI. We made a handy little script in case your cars have fixed IP addresses. For this, navigate to f 110 utils, scripts, pit starter, pit starter .sh, and fill in the IP addresses of the robot or the car into the script. Ideally, you configure your cars to have static IP addresses such that you only have to configure this once and afterwards you can just run the script and let it do its thing. Lastly, we need to find out our laptop's IP address and then we can launch the pit starter script, giving it our local IP address and specifying which node version we're using. Adding Arvis at the end also starts up Arvis. Now your terminal will be accepting the robot as its ROS master and open Arvis with the correct config. Now you can visualize the map and what the robot is seeing on your pit station. As a note, this can be easily incorporated in an LES as well. Now we get to the mapping part. For this, you can either drive the car on the track manually by pressing the L1 button and moving the joystick, or map autonomously with follow the gap by pressing R1. Drive around the map and return back to the origin of the map. You are now prompted in the terminal to press Y if you are happy with the map. In case this fails, try doing another lap. Now the map is being saved and the global racing line is being computed by using the parameters defined here in stackmaster config global planner params .yaml, where the safety widths of the racing lines can be altered in case the track is too narrow and the optimizer were to fail. Now you can define speed sectors and overtaking sectors. The speed sectors allow you to scale the speed by a scalar percentage, which allows you to easily influence the car's behavior later on. A rule of thumb to define your sectors in areas of similar curvature. Press done once you are happy with the sectors. Similarly, Defining overtaking sectors allows you to enable or disable overtaking on certain parts of the track. This is again to allow for an easy way of interaction with the robot. Once done, mapping is completed and you exit with Ctrl C. During the mapping process, the sector servers are being built. Hence, don't forget to source your workspace. You can do this with the alias source or by opening a new terminal. Now you should be able to see that the map has been created with stackmaster slash maps and that all relevant files exist, such as the pb stream for slam, 
the .pngs for the map server, and the sector and overtaking YAMLs for the sector servers. Let's go on to time trials. Let's use the newly created map and do an autonomous lab. For this, start with a set of freshly sourced terminals. Then start a ROS core. Then start the base system with the following command, where the map name corresponds to the name we have given the previous map, in our case, tutorial map. This now launches the stack with its state estimator module, meaning that it can now localize within the newly mapped environment with its racing line. We might have to drive around manually for a bit until the robot has localized itself. Now in a separate terminal, launch time trials. This will launch the controller with the Pure Pursuit controller to track the racing line. In time trials, the robot will assume an unobtrusive track without obstacles. Hence, all that it wants to do is to track the global racing line as fast as possible. Note that for now, we're using the Pure Pursuit algorithm instead of the more performant MAP algorithm as to use the MAP model, we first have to characterize the tires with a system identification procedure. This will be covered in a future video on advanced stack usage. Now we can open RQT to interact with the robot. For this, let's open our local terminal and export the ROS variables again, as before, but now with the RQT argument instead of RVIS. Now enter RQT and open the dynamic reconfigure tab. Here you should see some dynamic reconfigure servers running. Open the sector scaler tab here. As you can see, it's set to 50% by default for safety. This means that currently the robot is tracking the trajectory at half of the pre-computed maximum velocity. Let's adapt the global scaler and the sector scalers to enable the robot to run at higher speed scales. Note that the maximum limit of a speed scale is dependent on the grip level of your floor and the tires that you are using. The global optimizer that computes your racing line does not consider this, hence you will probably not be able to run your car at 100% unless you have very grippy conditions. With this, your robot is now able to complete laps autonomously and you are now able to easily tune and influence the car's behavior by tuning the sectors. Let's look at the head-to-head -head races. To switch to the head-to-head -head mode, we first need to kill the time trials by pressing Ctrl+C c in the terminal where we launch them. Make sure the base system is still running. Then we launch head-to-head -head with the following command. This will launch the stack with the Pure Pursuit controller to track the racing line and to track and detect opponents. But be aware, the overtake sectors are not activated yet, so the car will just track the opponent and not overtake it.
To change that, enable the overtaking sectors in RQT by checking the overtaking sector X box in the OT underscore den underscore sector underscore server. Now the car should be able to overtake the opponent. see the state of the car, we can launch the state indicator. With this, your robot is now able to race autonomously and overtake other cars. With this, you are now ready to use the Forza ETH F110 simulator. Special thanks goes to all the developers and the makers of the original F110 simulator and gym environment. Good luck and all the best for your F110 journey. We hope to see you at the next race.